Hello, how's it going? Welcome back to a new video. In this one, we're going to be talking about while and do while. In the last video, as I recall, we spent some time looking at the for loop and explaining how looping in general works in the Java language and the for loop in particular. There are two other ways of looping um, that I want to talk about. So, uh, if we execute this program again, let me move my picture. Right, so we start with zero, we finish with the last value of i to be four that we'll um, consider for the iteration, um, for, for the last iteration. Then when the value is five, we quit. Um, I actually just thought of this. So, you know, we could have the declaration of the variable outside of the loop, and then this part, you know, can be empty. Like, we don't have to declare the variable here. But the thing is, when you declare the variable here, then the scope of the variable becomes this. So once you exit that scope, then the variable is destructed, is, is basically not accessible anymore. So here I can do um, a print statement of i and then say the last value of i is let's try to execute that. So as you see, the last value of i is five, which confirms that, you know, at the last iteration, um, four is incremented to five, and then five is evaluated against um, five if, if it's less than five, and then that's false. And that's what you get for the last value. Right, so um, also this part could be removed as well and could be at the end of the for loop. So if we try and execute that, we'll get the same um, result. If you remove that part, then you're going to end up with an infinite loop. Basically, a loop that never um, stops. You just loop infinitely. So I'll just run that to demonstrate an infinite loop. And then, you know, you could see I'll hit stop. And then you could see just it just keeps printing zero, 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 zero. And just look how many lines it has printed. In fact, just in a few seconds, like, are you seeing this? I'm going to copy that, put it in a text editor, just to show you how many iterations we have in the few seconds. <laughs> 87,376 um, iterations. That's not a smart idea. So always make sure that your loops are not infinite so that you don't um, produce unstable, buggy applications and um, programs. Right. So I wasn't intending on doing any of that. Uh, I was intending to start talking about the while and the do while, but this is very helpful. And I think it is um, important for this example that I have here, which is basically um, the same thing, but using while. So I'm going to put the thing the way it was. Oh, interesting. I could keep, um, I could keep the, the two increments here and then notice what's going to happen when you print. So we're only printing 0, 2, 4. So what is happening here? Um, you start with 0, you do the first iteration, and then you increment that to 1, then you increment it to 2, and then your second iteration will have 2. And then you increment the 2 to 3, then you increment 3 to 4, and then your third iteration will have 4, and then you increment the 4 to 5, and then you increment the 5 to, the five to 6, and then you compare a six less than five 
um, false and then you exit out. Also, one thing you want to notice here is if I try to print i, it'll complain that there is no variable i um, that it, 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 it can find and it's giving me this hint here that I could bring i into the scope. So once it has moved the declaration of i outside of a um, for definition, then i is preserved because the scope of i is no longer this. The scope of i is, uh, apologies, is this one, the main function, which means, you know, you could move i here. And we haven't talked about this, but just add static before. And you'll also be able to um, broaden the scope of i. But that's a topic for another time. Cool. So the last value is six because you're incrementing twice. So instead of five, you end up with six. Right. Keep distracting myself. Can't help my ADHD, but uh, it's kind of useful, you know. Also, you feel free to experiment with this yourself and um, find ways to break the loop and understand what's going on uh, when you do. So here's another way of doing the same thing that we're doing here, but with the while loop. So with while, you really want to worry about the condition and it doesn't offer you in its definition ways to define the variable or the um, really the, the, the iteration variable and ways to update that iteration variable or, you know, you could do whatever you want here. You could have um, in j equals zero and then you could update j instead of i. Like there is no, um, there's no reason why you should stick to updating this guy. But you know, you normally would do that because um, you don't want to end up with an infinite loop. And if this is the place where you update J, then I don't know, what's the point of not using J for your um, iterations? Anyways, let's remove this and try and run this while loop that we have here. So we're gonna end up with the same zero, one, two, three, four. And notice that the I is defined. You cannot define I here. I mean, even if you do, then you're gonna have a, com um, a compilation error, really um, complaining that I cannot be resolved. So. So you, you, you have to, by definition, have the counter variable outside your while. And uh, you could also have while true, which will produce an infinite loop. Let's run that. Yeah, as you can see. Uh, and then say something like, uh, if I, less than five um, then break so I've negated the same condition that we had and then this is a keyword really that um, will break the execution of a while loop or a for loop any loop really in case it's invoked in case in, in case you stumble stumble upon it so let me execute we get the same result if uh, so in the case of this condition is true we're going to break i'm going to remove that and then watch what's going to happen we break after the first iteration so that's the break um, I'm gonna do it the way it was before, and I'm gonna show you a new keyword. Um, let's make it from zero to ten. 
So we're going to print iteration 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 until 9. And I just want to print the odd numbers. How do you know a number is an odd number? Uh, a very simple test would be to take the number and then take the modulus of that number's division by 2. And then if the modulus, sorry, if the modulus is 0, then you decide that this is an even number. If it's um, 1, then it's an odd number. So the mod operator um, is this guy. And you could say that the iteration variable is i mod 2. OK, that on its own is not, uh, that, that will produce an, uh, a number. So it's not a conditional sort of expression. Uh, it's not a logical expression. And the if statement, as we know from previous videos, expects a logical expression. So we'll say equal equal 0. So if this is the case, then we have an even number at hand. We did mention that we wanted to have odd numbers. So we're going to change that to 1. So let me move this here and move this after. If your modulus result, um, if your division um, has a remainder of 1, then it's definitely an odd number. I'd like that to be printed. And if you go ahead and execute that, you're going to have 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, all the odd numbers. You can have any number here. And then you'll end up with all the odd numbers between um, 0 and this number. Change that to 0. You're going to have all the even numbers. So 0, 2, 4, 6, 8. So that's how the while works. You can have anything here as a um, condition, really. And that condition is evaluated on every iteration of the while. You don't have to break from the for or the while solely um, on that condition. Uh, you could break using the break keyword with custom logic that you can have, like the one we have here, within the body of the while or the for. Okay, you get the point. Go talk to ChatGPT and get more examples. Right, let's get to the do while. So I'm going to do do while. Let's repeat the same example that we had. So i less than 5, we start with i equals 0, and then we do uh, print i iteration. And after we do i plus plus, let's run that. So we got the same result. So what is so different between while and do while? Why the do and the block before the while and the whole thing? Well, it turns out if you um, make the condition to be false, so i here is 0. The condition here is false. So if you had a while with a false condition before, like here, i equal equal 5. And copy the two statements from here. Paste. I'm going to remove this for now. And execute. You're not going to end up with anything being printed because the condition is false. So it's not going to go in and bother with these statements. So what happens if we put this back in here? What's going to change? We get iteration 1 executed. 
Um, sorry, I lost the debugger by mistake. So we got iteration, sorry, iteration zero executed. Regardless of this, condi of this condition being um, untrue at all times. So what has changed? Well, it turns out with a do while, you get to execute the same iteration um, without the condition, like whether the condition is true or false, it doesn't really matter. We're going to do it once. Uh, so I'll show you this example that I have here, which is, which will demonstrate to you the idea here. So a scanner object or a scanner class. So it doesn't really matter what this is doing. All you need to know that this statement here is creating an object of the scanner class that is allowing us to receive input from the terminal, from the from this um, prompt here, using the system in, which is the system input stream. If you don't understand what's going on, it doesn't matter. Um, just think of it as a way to grab user input. String response is the response from the user. And what we're going to do is we're going to say, hello, Java learner, do you want to see this message again? Yes or no? If the user inputs yes, then we're going to do, again, if you don't understand this, it's fine. We're just going to make sure that the user has um, typed in yes. And if that's the case, then we're going to show them the message again. If they type in anything else, we're going to break out of the loop. So let's run that. Hello, Java learner. Do you want to see this message again? I'm going to type in yes. And then here it invoked a scanner.next line. That's, that's a blocking statement. It's blocking the execution of the program or the thread in this program until that line has been um, like a return. A line has been fed to the program and then the end of the line, because I'm, I'm scanning for a line, so I'm saying, give me the next line. So until I hit return on my keyboard, a line will be fed into the program's input stream and then the execution can continue again. So if I type in anything else, it's going to, uh, this evaluation will be false and then it's going to break out of the loop. That's it for this video. I hope it was helpful. In the next video, I want to look at nested looping. So one loop inside the other, I guess. And I want to see what kind of use cases would that be useful for. We may look at um, 2D arrays. Um, uh, I don't recall if we have looked into 1D arrays. If we haven't, we'll look into 1D and 2D arrays and see how we can um, basically manipulate them using the nested looping. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.